Hi, it's Gail Hunts from Automate UK. We're here today to peek into the future of automation. So in terms of how you're building them now for the future, is it going to evolve into something different or how do you think it will change? It's constantly evolving because we have to keep ahead of the market. Yes. Um, that's, that's the main point. Obviously, every industry has competitors and we have to be one step ahead of those. And we are, you know, the leading manufacturers of erectors and sealers in the world. Um, having youngsters come through, the knowledge going from the old to the young, if you yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. very, very important. Very important. So you're encouraging young people in Indeed. here anyway, aren't yes. you, at the moment? Yeah, we are, yes. We have um, two young people coming in now who are mechanical fitters and hopefully we have uh, one other person coming in in the near future who's the grandson of one of the fitters here. Oh, that's... <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, see, that's a way to recruit. Exactly, it? yeah, get the family in, <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. So do you think customers see the, see the value of automation, automating their plants? Because if they can't get workers or either, surely automation is the answer. Massively, yeah, massively. They, even throughout the, the, the time when the orders were quiet, um, the inquiries weren't quiet. People were, were preparing for ready when they were going to start ordering again. Right. So we're, we've been quoting and, and helping people out massively and waiting for those orders to start coming in, which they, which they have done. So, so to answer your question, I don't think there's ever been any concern that automation isn't the way forward. It's just being able to pick the right time to do it and when the business can afford it and is able to purchase capital equipment, really. Sure, because, of course, all their costs have gone up to all the customers' Absolutely. costs have gone, the sugar, ingredients, yeah. everything. Everything's up, up. gone through the roof, yeah. yeah. And, of course, machines will work 24-7. You put them in a factory and, you know, they won't go to the Bahamas on holiday. They stay there and they work hard and... and you know, they get their money back pretty quickly. That, that's another thing, actually, looking at the UK market now. I find that people are a lot more, a lot more open to, to longer return on investments, whereas before it might be two years or a year. I find in that, the, obviously, with the robotic side of the business, people are looking at, actually, we, are, we understand that it's a three or five year payback, yeah. but it's the right way to take our business forward. Oh, and, well, that, is, that, that is really fantastic mm. to hear, yeah. isn't it? And also, let's talk about the robotics business, because, of course, that's not where Enderline started. It's, it's where you are now. And, and why did you do that? Yeah, that, I'm quite proud of the robotic side of things, because that's something I, I started when... Obviously, my father is, is now semi-retired. So um, me and my brother started the robotic side of it with a company over in Greece who approached us to, to work together. They obviously really liked the name that was, that was industry sure. recognised. Yeah. Um, so we struck up a partnership with them, started a new company, um, and it's just gone from strength to strength. I mean, um, we've, we've just installed the biggest line in the company's history, two and a half million at, um, at Life Health Foods. So it's, it's going really, really well. And it's difficult for us to grow this business um, with case erectors and sealers without taking on new products. So what we've done is rather than invest all that time internally, we've brought in a company that knows what they do. We, we've, got, we've got a business that shares with them and then we use their expertise on that side of it. So it allows us to cover the whole product range and grow our, our marketplace in the UK. It's really impressive stuff. You know, it's, it's very interesting when we exhibit it at the, at the Automate um, P1, the PPMA show. Um, it goes down really well and, and you know it's 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 exciting stuff and it's very very clever you know way way above my intelligence level <laughs> <laughs> well i i don't believe that <laughs> but anyway thank you very much for talking to us no problem thank you so looking to the future yeah what are customers asking for today and into the future? What do you think they're going to be looking for from your equipment? I think it's, uh, it's that's an interesting question because it's not just about the equipment. There's, there's, a, there's, it's a, there's a much bigger question and that is how do they pick the equipment but also the supplier as well. Sure. So it's not, it, the supplier is as important as the equipment, you know, 
and, and the, supply, the supplier that they tend to look for is somebody who is able to uh, sort of react quickly and support them uh, and offer a very good clean installation. What needs are you meeting with, with that that it's they're usually, demanding? There's, there's normally three needs. There is uh, space challenges, yeah. there's of course budget, uh, and then there's the throughput rates as well. So um, as you can imagine, uh, palletizing and case packing tends to be the very last thing that companies think about. And at that point, the production halls are already filled. Whereas you've got one operator able to, let's say, pack and palletize in a small confined space, machines need a lot more space than a person. Yeah. But the benefit of a, a machine is it doesn't need to take breaks and it's very consistent at what it can do. It'll give you the same consistency and accuracy throughout. And maybe some might argue in 2024, people shouldn't be packing boxes onto robots as well, again, their full-time job. It's, it's interesting because a lot of companies have the, the vision of removing people from their production to save money. Yeah. But it's not the right way of looking at it. What, what we tend to find is that the people remain where they are and they're upskilled to do lots of different things in the factory. You know, it's, at the moment, this, I hear the same message from my customers, which is they're struggling to find people yeah. to do the work. Yeah. So if we're able to automate certain areas which, you know, increase output, um, increase health and safety, uh, increase the overall performance of the business, they can sort of redistribute the existing operators in that space elsewhere. And what we've also found is some operators are now upskilled to then look after the machinery, which is actually really good for these individuals because yeah. not only are they learning something new, but they're going to be getting paid more as well. That's brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. So in terms of, do you think the fact that they are struggling to find people for their factories, that actually that should increase the use of automation because as you say, they can use their redeployed skills across the factories. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's multi-layered really, because that's, that's one of the reasons, but then the consumer, you and I, are always demanding lower and lower prices yeah. at the supermarket. The supermarket then demands those lower prices from the manufacturer, so the manufacturer now needs to find a way of cutting those costs. Yeah. Machinery automation is one of the reasons, but also removing heads, unfortunately, is another way of saving costs because the cost of employment now is uh, starting to go up quite drastically, yeah, yeah. especially in the current economic times. Sure. OK, well, happy times at Enderline for yeah, you and robotics. And we look forward to about hearing more later. Thank you. OK, no worries. So in terms of, you know, smart, everything has to be smart, you know, even our fridges have to be smart or whatever. How smart are your machines? In that? So, so machines can be as smart as, as you need them to be, really. You're able to go in and, and retrieve data so we can tell you how many boxes we've run in a day, how many failures you've had, potentially what, what, why you've had those failures and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. We find more and more that customers, particularly larger customers, are looking to harvest as much information as they possibly can from, from machines like this. So things like preventative maintenance Correct. and... Yeah. yeah, so you can perhaps understand why the machine's gone down. And if it is a maintenance issue, perhaps you can alter your maintenance routines to, to negate those sort of things. OK, so that's what they're asking about now. So let's use our crystal ball and go forward a few years. And we're saying, oh, what will they be demanding that you think your machines are going to have to be doing five years, ten years or whatever? I think, I think for us as a business, it, it, f certainly from a case erecting and case sealing perspective, um, it, the machinery does what it does. All we've done in the past is develop them to be faster. Yeah. I think what people will be looking at in the future is to automate the trickier bit in the middle where we're actually product handling and product into a box. Oh, OK. Um, so we can do that now. We, you know, we have packing systems out in the marketplace uh, and with advances in robotics and tooling for, for, for pick heads, I think we'll be able to you know, go after more Pick and place applications. Oh, okay. So you'll be doing pick and place, yeah. which is a, which is new for you, isn't it? Yeah, relatively. It's something we've done in the past, and we've approached it in lots of different ways in the past. But obviously, with our sister company, Enderline Robotics, and their expertise in robotics and product handling, uh, we're now able to offer that as part of the part of the overall offer. So you're going to be benefiting from the new the new sort of absolutely, tradition. yeah, absolutely. And it's I think I think that's the way it's going to be. There's going to be a lot more, especially with the challenges around labour. I think there's going to be a lot more call for us to try and fully automate lines rather than. Perhaps just deliver just, a just box. Just a few, and, a few yeah, bits. Exactly or... that. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Today, we gaze into the crystal ball 
we uncovered Enderline's vision for the future, what challenges await, and their vision to overcome them.